All right, gang, so we're going to begin our uh, quick introduction to tissues. We won't get into specifics of tissues, but what we'd like to do in this video is talk about the four major classes, epithelial, uh, connective, muscular, and nervous, and give you some basic ideas. All right, so let's jump right into it. Um, so what is a tissue? So tissues are a collection of cells and cell products that perform specific limited functions. That's kind of your textbook definition. Um, I tend to use... Uh, this. It's a bunch of cells that pretty much look the same and they kind of work together. Um, and, uh, and, and you'll see lots of examples of these over the course of the year. We're going to try and focus just on the ones that are the most important for our understanding of all the other organ systems. Right? So the first category are called epithelial tissues. So this is one of our four main categories of tissues. Right? And uh, some general characteristics. So first of all, epithelial tissues always have an exposed surface. So um, everything you see when you look at another person um, everything you see is an epithelial tissue, the hair, the outer layer of the skin, the outer layer of the cornea of their eye, their nails, all of that is made of epithelial tissue. So anything that ever has an exposed surface. And what's confusing for people, people think of the ones that I listed on the outside of the body, but also in the body. So imagine, say, this is um, a blood vessel going through your body, okay? The inner layer that I just drew would be made out of epithelial tissue, and then the next layer would be another type of tissue called connective, and then there'd be some other stuff, uh, other layers in there. But that inner layer that's in red, that would be epithelial because it's exposed. You can have an internal exposed surface. So the outside of every organ is an epithelial tissue. Um, the, the linings of all these tubes are epithelial tissue because they're exposed surfaces. Okay. What else do they have in common? Um, well, some vocab for you. So first bit is this phrase called cellularity which means they're really tightly packed with cells. Um, they almost look like bricks all stacked together. Okay? Um, second idea is polarity. Polarity means that they have a top and a bottom. So the apical is the exposed surface, um, and the basal surface is kind of the bottom, so the exposed surface and the bottom. And they actually are very different. They're usually the outside edge because it's got a different function from the inside edge. They look very different. We'll show you, show you a picture of that in a minute. Okay? Um, attachment. They always have a layer of connective tissue underneath. And the connective tissue is usually referred to either as the basal lamina or the basement membrane, um, but it's going to be connective tissue. Okay? Um, avascularity, um, what they refer to as vascular is talking about blood vessels, so A is saying without. So in general, epithelial tissues have very little in the way of a blood supply. And then the last one is regeneration. They have a really high mitotic rate, or my, right, high rate of mitosis. Um, and that's because they're always exposed. They die off. They're exposed to things, um, and they die off at a much higher rate than anywhere else, and they don't have a lot of blood supply. Um, so the cells are starving to death in most of the cases in epithelial tissue. All right, so here's a little diagram showing you a lot of those. So you can see, first of all, there's no blood vessels in there. Um, underneath, you've got this layer of connective tissue called the basal lamina, right? So that's connective tissue underneath. They're very tightly packed, look like they're kind of like bricks stuck together. Um, they have a top and a bottom. Notice that this exposed outer edge has cilia and microvilli and all these special features on the outside where the bottom edge is, doesn't have any of that. So it's very different. Um, they're polar cells. And because of that, so you get to see a lot of the um, characteristics in that one little picture. Now, functions of epithelial tissue, they have lots of different functions. There's a lot. We're going to learn, I think, 10 different types of epithelial tissue, um, and that's just what we're going to cover. But in general, they typically control, they provide some protection, uh, depending on how thick they are. Some are really protective, some aren't protective at all, though. Um, they control permeability. Some of them have almost zero permeability. It's permeability, and some are the most permeable substance we have in the body. Uh, they usually have a lot of nerves and sensation stuff in there, and they can produce a lot of secretions. So glands are mostly made of epithelial tissue that make all those secretions. Um, real general list, guys. This list is not terribly useful. What you're going to actually have to know is the individual tissues and what each of those is good at. What is each function of each of those individual ones? That's much more useful for us. All right, so we said epithelial tissues are tightly packed. Uh, where they meet, they have a couple different types of cell junctions that kind of hold them together, okay? So the first called occluding junctions, okay? Um, and what they are is they're watertight junctions, watertight junctions. So they seal between things. So you'd find these 
um, like the uh, wall of the anus, right? So the anus, you got you got feces that's going to go out through the anus. You don't want things that fusing back in. That's loaded with bacteria. You want to prevent any of that from getting back into the body. So the whole anus is lined with like a watertight seal, so it stays in the digestive tract, and none of that bacteria makes its way back into the body. Um, your skin also has a lot of these, right? Uh, so your skin, you don't want your skin soaking up everything, every single thing it touches. So it's got a lot of occ occluding junctions, keeping things out. Occluding is keeping things out. Okay. Next one down the gap junctions, these are for com communication. They're actually like little tunnels um, between cells, and there's lots of chemicals. I mean, cells don't talk in the way we talk, but they have lots of messages that go back and forth. Um, so that's important. Um, in the heart, it's going to be really important because it actually is how the electrical signal passes through these gap junctions. Right? Our last one are called the macula adherens, okay? and um, they are our strongest... Um, intercellular cement. It really ties the cells together. So anywhere you're going to have a lot of pulling and twisting on cells, like in your skin, right? Um, you know, uh, like anytime somebody like, like twisted your arm, the reason your skin didn't just, the cells didn't pull apart and just shred in there is because these cell junctions kind of holding the cells together. Um, and we can kind of see all of those in this little picture here. Okay, so here's a gap junction. There's a little communicating tunnel between these two types of cells. Um, we have an adhesion belt, so that's essentially super glue between those, and then you've got like a watertight seal right here. Um, so your skin would actually have an example of all of those. We want to have lots of uh, strength. The cells need to be able to communicate, and we want this pretty good watertight seal in your skin. So you, some spots have all of these junctions, some have only one or, or none of these. Um, this just kind of depends on the function of a different area. All right, so when we classify or name the epithelial tissues, um, they're classified based on two things. They're either classified based on their shape, okay, or based on their layers, okay? Um, and uh, if it is based on shape, you have really three big options. If it's kind of thin and flat, they call it squamous or squamous, depending on who you're asking. I use the phrase squamous, but, um, or pronounce it squamous. Uh, cuboidal, they're kind of like cube-shaped, pretty easy, right? And then columnar, they're going to look like, Columns. They're going to look like tall rectangles. Okay. Um, if we base upon layers, um, we use the phrase simple if it's a single layer. That's what it means. If you see here the word simple, it means single layer. If you see the word stratified, it means it's got multiple layers, several layers. So let's show you those in a couple pictures here. Um, I don't know why I have two copies of that. Um, but let's look at this right here. So um, this is. Uh, the three cell types, right? So squamous, squished little flat cells, cube-shaped cells, cuboidal, right? So squamous, cuboidal, and they look like columns, so the columna, okay? Um, and then here we, we combine that information. So this is called stratified squamous because it's got multiple layers. Look at all these different layers going right through here. All right, and the outer edge is squished, and we always name it based on the outer edge, okay? Here is called stratified cuboidal because it's got multiple layers. You can see one layer right there, one layer right there, and the outer layer is cube-shaped, okay? And this is called stratified columnar because the outer layer is column-shaped, and it's multiple layers. You always name it by the outer exposed because remember, this is the functional layer. This is now the outside edge. That's what we want it to look like, all right? The uh, last couple of things we want to talk about with epithelial uh, tissues, um, there are two big types of glands. Endocrine glands are the ones that make hormones, um, and then exocrine glands are the ones that open up into ducts. So these are the ones like your sweat glands and things like that. Okay, so just two vocab words that might pop up from time to time. Anytime you hear that word endocrine, you're thinking hormones. Um, and exocrine is kind of all the other stuff that like saliva and so forth. All right. All right, so we've talked about epithelial. Let's look at the other types of connect of uh, tissues here, and we'll start with connective tissue. Okay, so our connective tissue to start with, okay. And uh, basic functions of the connective tissue, because that's what this slide is about. I'm going to mark that, guys, so just so you don't miss it. Um, uh, is it's kind of a connection. Well, basal lamina underneath the epithelial tissue, um, but it's a really wide variety of, of functions. So bone is a connective tissue, so the structure of the body. Fat, adipose is a connective tissue, stores energy. Uh, blood is con considered a connective tissue, so we're transporting and moving things around the body. Um, and the important part is, guys, remember that you don't see these on the outside, okay? Now they're always covered by epithelial tissue. The epithelial tissue make the outside uh, coverings of all of the body. Some general characteristics um, is they have lots of space in between cells, which is called matrix. 
Okay, so they have lots of matrix, and we'll come back to that in a moment, okay? Um, so they have lots of space in between cells, um, and what fills that space is not empty space. Uh, we don't have big hollow balloons all throughout the body, um, but it's filled with two things. It's either filled with the um, solid, what are called extracellular protein fibers, okay? And we'll show you those. There's the three different big type, three big types we're going to talk about in a moment, or the fluid, which is referred to as the ground substance, okay? Those two things together, if you take those two pieces together, that is called the matrix, okay? It's right here. So the ground fiber, the fibers, and the ground substance of so the solid strings and the fluid are what actually make up all, the, fill the space between the cells, and that's referred to as the matrix. So let's talk about a couple of the types of cells that you see within connective tissues. So the first one are called the, the fibroblasts, and they're the most abundant, so the most common one. And what they do is they secrete those protein fibers. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about in a minute things like collagen and reticular fibers and elastic fibers. They're made by the fibroblasts, okay? Um, you also have some cells that are called fibrocytes, and these are kind of like the caretakers. So once the fibroblasts make a fiber, then the fibroblast, the fibrocytes will kind of maintain it. They'll repair little tears and things like that in there. Um, they're more the caretakers. So the fibroblasts are kind of the original builders, and then the fibrocytes kind of do all the maintaining over the course of your life. The next type are called macrophages. So macrophages are essentially like they're essentially white blood cells that are no longer in the blood. They actually crawl around through your tissues. Um, in particular, we're talking about within the connective tissues here. And what they do is, remember, they phrase phagocytosis from last unit. They go around and they swallow up. You know, if there's a dead cell, a damaged uh, chunk of, of tissue, if there is uh, a bacteria or a virus, um, and they um, and they try and clean up that stuff. So they're kind of like a garbage disposal within the tissues. Okay. Uh, the next one are called the adipocytes. Okay. Um, and those are your fat cells. Um, we'll talk a lot more about those when we talk about the adipose tissue. And then the mesenchymal cells. These mesenchymal cells are essentially they're kind of stem cells. Remember we had that conversation about stem cells earlier in the year, and we said, you know, a true stem cell can become anything. Um, these cells can become any of the other. Um, connected tissue cells. So they could become adipocyte if you need them, or they could become a macrophage if you needed that, or they could become one of those fibroblasts or fibrocytes that were on the other page, depending on what you need. But they really couldn't go on to become like a red blood cell or a neuron. Um, they're, they're somewhat limited. They're partially trained to become a connective tissue cell. All right, so the, the, the one of the most important things you remember about connective tissues are the three types of fibers that they use, because that really gives them their characteristics, okay? So the first one are called collagen. Many of you guys have heard of collagen. Collagen is what a lot of people use in plastic surgery. They inject it into lips and things like that uh, to make them more full. Um, it's a big part of what makes your skin nice and strong, um, and it is the most common of our fibers in our con connective tissue. Um, and they're kind of, you, you can kind of consider them the ropes of the body. They're like long ropes, um, and they can tie two parts together. Your tendons and ligaments are completely, almost completely built out of these that hold your bones together and hold your muscles to your bones, um, but they're nice and strong, okay? The reticular fibers are also made of collagen, but now they're really thin. So instead of like a collagen looks like this, it kind of looks like a big rope all braided together going in the same direction, whereas a reticular fiber, you end up with more of a web. Um, and that serves its purpose too, right? You, if, if you're building something, it'd be nice to have big, strong ropes, and it'd also be nice to have like a, a net or um, a webbing that you can use to hold things together, okay? Not as strong, but covers a whole lot more space and, and a lot more of a support that way, right? And the last one are elastic fibers, and as you might guess, elastic fibers can stretch and bounce back into place. So being able to have something that's stretchy as a building material is pretty handy. So we've got nice ropes, we've got a nice net, we can use, and we've got these nice rubber bands that we can use throughout the body to build stuff. So the next thing on there is our muscle tissue. So that's our third type category of tissue. Um, and they're designed to contract. Uh, they produce all of our body movement, both internal and external. So you think of movement like bending your elbow or walking, things like that, but also like pumping of your blood and, and urinating and moving food through your digestive tract and swallowing and so forth, okay? Um, and there's three big categories. Uh, the skeletal, the ones that you guys are most familiar with, those are all the ones that are voluntary movement, okay? So voluntary movement is any muscle that you can ever consciously say, do it, and it contracts, that is a skeletal muscle. So when you blink, okay, that's a skeletal muscle. When you um, breathe, you can take a deep breath right now, that's a skeletal muscle that controls those breathings, okay? 
Cardiac muscle is involuntary and it's only found in the heart, so that's pretty easy. And then smooth muscle is our involuntary stuff, so it is involuntary, that's really important. Um, and it's usually all of your internal organs, things like your uh, digestive tract squeezing things along, um, the, the, the respiratory areas, um, the reproductive tracts um, have a lot of involuntary contractions along with them. Uh, so that's going to be the smooth muscle, okay? So the only one we have conscious control over is the skeletal, um, and then you've got the cardiac and smooth, okay? Um, the only other thing I want to mention is um, how smooth got its name. When you look at the muscles, you're going to see the muscles kind of look like tubes, kind of like this, okay? Um, and the skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles have these stripes going up and down on them called striations, um, but the smooth muscle does not. Smooth muscle kind of looks like this, and it doesn't have those striations, so somebody looked at a microscope and said, thought that that looked smoother than the other, and therefore it got its name because of that. And our last slide with the tissues um, is the neural tissue, so ner or nervous tissue, you'll hear it uh, done both ways, okay? Now, it's all one type of tissue. Please don't mess this up, okay? Um, we've got a couple different projects and things you're going to talk about tissues in there. These are This is all one type of tissue. It's just got two different types of cells in it. These are the neural cells that make up the tissue, okay? So the first one are called the neurons. You've all heard of neurons. Neurons are the ones that send the signals. They're the ones that release the neurotransmitters. Those are the ones that actually make your muscles contract and allow you to think and do all the cool things, okay? The neuroglia are kind of the underappreciated guys that take care of the neurons. They um, support um, the neurons, actually hold them in the right place. They maintain the environment around them, make sure they have enough glucose and oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, they produce the, the, there's all of your neurons, or many of your neurons have these substances called myelin around the outside that make the signals go faster. That comes from the neuroglia. So these guys are really important. Um, they're kind of the supporting cells or helper cells. I tend to refer to them as the helper cells. All right, but they're really, really helpful, um, and your neurons really don't function without them, so they're, they're kind of integral into the process. Right? So those are our types of tissue, guys. We've got our epithelial tissues that are your general coverings of the body, um, lots of different categories there. you got your connected tissues that kind of hold everything together. you got your muscle tissues that move everything, and you got your neural tissue, which is your, your lightning-fast communication throughout the body. All right? So when we come into class tomorrow, make sure you ask questions about anything you missed, and we'll tackle them uh, as need be. Have a good night.